country roads take me home to the place The 20th century was marked by the decline of country living and rise of urban America. Many people moved to cities in search of good jobs and an easier life. By 1950, only 16% of Americans lived on farms. This was down from 50% in 1900. The ones who stayed resided in small towns and had a real sense of community. One such family was headed by Robert and Jean West. The children of farmers, Bob and Jean, lived on a dairy farm in southwestern Ohio, 50 miles north of Cincinnati. Years later, they reminisce on what it was like growing up in rural America. Jean's family grew up on a farm in Fairhaven, Ohio. Bob's parents lived 10 miles away outside Liberty, Indiana. In a time before TV and video games, one of Jean's favorite activities was enjoying nature on her parents' farm. About the first place we'd go would be to the creek, and uh, that was, seemed to be my favorite spot. It was a peaceful place to hear the water running. Family life was important to her, and she appreciated the time when everyone was together. Probably the best years is when we were all at home and our kids were growing up, when we were all together. One of my favorite childhood memories was making homemade ice cream during snowstorms. The electricity would go off, but we had a hand crank ice cream maker that we could use. The four kids would take turns cranking the ice cream until it froze, and then we would eat the ice cream under blankets because the weather was freezing. For my parents, life was not easy because they grew up in the 1930s and 40s. Continuing, he pointed out the absence of an indoor bathroom. We had a young outside toilet and no bathroom. It was out in the chicken yard. Sometimes a rooster was mean and chased us when we went to talk. My mother echoed those sentiments as the house where she grew up lacked running water. There was no running water in it, no hot water of any kind. And so, no bathroom. So we just got things one at a time, which was the only way to do it. So how did you deal with the fact that there was no running water in the house where you lived? We carry it in. No, there was a there was a sink in the kitchen, a pump, hand pump. But then uh, gradually we got water in there. And what did you use for a bathroom? Well. Outside. She remembered when they got electricity. I mean, our way of living is nothing compared to what, what they did. But things have changed <laughs> tremendously since I was born when I can even remember when they put in electricity. So your lifestyle is different. When do they put in electricity at their house? Well, I must have been about 10 or 12. Laundry was a big chore in the times before modern washers and dryers. I had to heat water on the stove, and I did get a washer, Maytag washer, right away, and uh, wash that way. which is a long time, time you heat the water and, or carry it in and heat it and wash and rinse, and carry it back out, hang them up. You didn't do it in 15 minutes. Farm life at that time featured horses and old machinery. Well, at that time they farmed with horses and I would go out and maybe ride the horse half a day at a time while he was working in the field. I also 
rode the binder to help cut wheat, which I would have to trip it with my foot. As my father could attest, farm life also could be dangerous. He was not the only one at risk. In 1966, when I was 11, I got rheumatic fever and inflammation of the heart. It put me in the hospital for two weeks and featured a months-long recovery. At that time, rheumatic fever was a disease of the developing world. There actually were very few cases in the United States, but I was an exception to that fact. Fortunately, penicillin saved my life and put me back on the road to recovery. A near catastrophe took place after that when our barn burned down. Our father barely got himself and the cows out of the burning building. The barn was completely destroyed and it took months to put up a new barn. One of the hardest farm jobs in my youth was baling hay. We did this in July and August, and the temperatures often were well into the 90s. We had to stack 40-pound bales on the wagon and then unload the hay in the barn. But this job gave me my lifelong goal of an inside job with no heavy lifting. In the late 1960s, our financial life improved substantially when my mother got a job off the farm. My father needed a new tractor but couldn't afford it, so my mother found a secretarial job at Miami University just 10 miles from where we lived. The job turned out to be a godsend as it gave our family a steady salary, good health insurance, and secure retirement benefits. My mother recalled her interview with the chair of the political science department. I want to know my abilities, what I could do, how long I intended to work, I told him I didn't know, maybe five years. Ended up 25. <laughs> the Miami University job provided family members with an employee tuition benefit that enabled them to go to college for $125 a year. And as she pointed out years later, the desire for an education really paid off for her kids. Ken got his degree and became a math teacher in Florida. Joanne worked in the Human Resources Department at Miami University. Shirley helped manage a farm outside of Eaton. And I became a political science professor at Brown University and later worked at the Brookings Institution in Washington, D.C. That $125 per year tuition investment gave me extraordinary opportunities throughout my life. I met many political leaders. It was fun to see what these individuals were like in person. Plus, I loved it when Donald Trump said I was a fool. The steady job enabled my mother to travel around the world. But we went to Hawaii and um, went to London twice and went to Romania, and, which are places that I never thought I would ever, ever go. But I did, and I'm glad I did. You learn see how other side of the world lives. It broadened her horizons far beyond the tiny hamlet where she grew up. My parents have passed on, but I am grateful for the guidance they provided. They helped each of us overcome our humble origins and lead fulfilling lives.